Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's episode. Um, kind of continuing on our subject from last time, we talked a lot about employment, working, being productive, uh, the reason it's so important for your mental health. And kind of following along with that idea today, we want to talk a little bit about setting boundaries with work. Um, I think that this is probably something we all talk to clients about because while working is healthy, there is a time when people take it to a point that is no longer healthy by not having healthy boundaries with work. So uh, where do you guys want to start with that? What's your experience with that? I I should preface by the fact I don't have all the answers. I just have all the opinions. <laughs> right? um, it's just very interesting because I'm in a career field where the narrative oftentimes is you do you and take care of yourself and mental health days are a thing. Uh, and I was raised by a family that tends to be very blue collar, works in retail. Uh, holidays and weekends were the busiest time. And so I kind of have that mentality coupled with the touchy feely of therapy. And so it's kind of interesting to blend. So I have opinions. But I don't know if they're like, <laughs> that's why I need you guys <laughs> the right to like, way. <laughs> yeah, I need you guys to like check me on this, right? <laughs> Maybe we could look at to begin with why we maybe should have some boundaries with work, right? So what happens when you have, like we just spent all of this time talking about why employment is a great thing for you and for your <clears throat> mental health. But if you don't have appropriate boundaries with work, what does that look like? I feel like it's funny you say that about like what we talk about in therapy, because when I work with other therapists or social workers as clients, they're almost always burned out because they don't have good boundaries with work. And it's probably something you guys have experienced. I know I have like in my life, and I think almost you kind of have to experience it once to learn to set the boundary. But um, yeah, burnout, I think it, you not having good boundaries leads you to work and at an unsustainable pace or with an unsustainable amount of energy or focus that, uh, then just plummets your actual productivity in the end. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and if we were going to kind of say what the symptoms of burnout are, right? How does somebody know if they're burned out? A lot of these symptoms look very similar to depression, right? Mm-hmm. That motivation starts to drop down. You start to feel a sense of dread about going into work. You feel um, some problems with sleep, some problems with like worry thoughts that are difficult to control. Um, And just like an overall sense of unwell when it comes to work. You start to think about work and it gives you like a really, really bad feeling. And a lot of those are symptoms of burnout. I think this answer tends to be variable because I think a lot of it depends on um, the industry that you're in, right? If... um, If you were in the healthcare field in 2020 after the COVID pandemic and shut down, and perhaps even today, I guarantee somewhere there was mandatory overtimes. Mm -hmm. There were probably doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists who, when their shift was over, they slept at the hospital rather than going home, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think that there is a place of employment that would ever give you your standard and then be mad at you for overperforming. But one of the things that I feel like I see in today's day and age with a lot of us young professionals maybe is this perfectionistic tendency that I have to do everything that work is asking of me. And although I love that idea, I don't think it's realistic. And I think there is value to having a boundary with that. I guess the question becomes how do you, how, once you experience those symptoms, the burnout, the low motivation, the tired, the dread to go back to work, how do you, how do you successfully and appropriately set boundaries in employment? I think it'll look different with every job. I know it's not a, the easiest answer, but like it's going to be, it's going to be case by case because different careers are different. Um, like I don't have the same issues working in this job and having boundaries as I did with some of my previous jobs. And I can remember being the first time I think I really experienced burnout. I was working for the state for child protective services. And um, what that looked like for me to set boundaries was turning off my work phone at a certain time, right? Just kind of accepting that 
nope, I can't be there for all these people 24 hours a day who keep calling me at night and calling me, texting me all hours of every day. Um, so like setting that and making sure I actually left work at five o'clock because I didn't actually need to get all my paperwork in or everything done before I left. Like th those things could wait till tomorrow. And so for that, for that job, for me, it was setting a lot of boundaries with my time, which maybe is more universally applicable to a lot of jobs. Um, recognizing that you show up for a certain amount of hours, they pay you for a certain amount of hours. And after that, you should probably leave. <laughs> I like that idea. Um, I've had a couple of jobs that I've experienced some pretty intense burnout and granted, like that's, this is also kind of my personality. Like I just, I work and work and work, right? And I enjoy yep. working. <laughs> and so it's, it's sometimes been hard for me to know where to set boundaries. But one of the things that's been really helpful for me is when I start to feel some of these symptoms or feelings start to creep in, I have to back up and say, okay, where, where are some of the big stressors that are crossing over into my life and taking up too much space? So what is it? What is it about this job that is causing me to feel burned out? Because it could be a lot of different things. Like you just said, your time, right? Mm -hmm. For me, um, there could have been multiple different things that were causing me to get stressed out. Maybe it's just straight up emails. I hate looking at my inbox and there's like a thousand emails in there and I just need to go through them all. Um, maybe it's also how much I'm, how much pressure I'm putting on myself to perform well or to complete all of the tasks. But I have to back up and I have to figure out, okay, what is it in this job that's causing me to feel so burned out so that I know what are the areas I need to find to set boundaries in? I actually really like that because as I'm listening to you guys talk and I'm thinking about this, there's one thing that tends to be a fairly standard, or at least used to be, um, and that was a two-week notice when I'm leaving a job, right? Um, I met with somebody the other day uh, who's a physician, and their position was you have to give a 90-day notice, right? So there's some variance to, the, to this. Um, but I like the idea of figuring out what it does look like for you for boundaries. I don't have my work email come to my phone. I'm guessing you do. Sure do. You do Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, see, mine doesn't. Now, I check my email a lot because I'm always on the computer, but that's a boundary that I don't get overwhelmed with with emails because I don't see it come to my phone, right? Now, I do have our phone line come to my phone, and so I'll see on a Saturday, or there's an unreasonable about amount of people who call at like 3 a.m. on a Saturday night to <laughs> request appointments. I don't know what that's I'm about. I'm glad we, we don't should... have access to that. <laughs> <laughs> we should cover that at yeah. some point. Um, but it might be worth looking at what that boundary is. Cause really the only one I can think of is like the standard. I give it two weeks to end a job before I move on to a next one. But what could some of these boundaries look like? So one is maybe not having my email come to my phone. Um, one for me is working hours, right? Like there has to be a point at which I say, no, no, I'm off work. So like when work comes up in my mind or when I see something on my phone, I remind myself like, oh, I'm not working right now, right? So I'm not going to even think about that right now. I'm not even going to deal with that right now. All of those things are going to have to wait until I'm back to working hours again. Um, and like this has been a hard thing for me to figure out and hold for myself at times, but I notice that my burnout really decreases if I'm able to set like these are the hours that I work. I don't work outside of those. Hmm. Any thoughts from you? Um, that's a good one. I think what I talk to people about a lot is like, I know you mentioned in a previous episode, in the last episode actually, we talked about uh, like people have a lot of opportunity to make more money if they leave their job a lot of the time rather than stay at one place. And um, I have some clients recently I've talked to who have been trying to change jobs or have changed jobs where there's been like a lot of, I can't leave because I owe my, I owe these people something. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe it's like a little bit more of a loose boundary than what Shara was talking about, but like acknowledging what the, the agreement of work is, right? That you, you, you sign on to work this many hours for this much money and past that, like you're even, right? You don't owe them more of your life or more of anything because you have, mm -hmm. uh, even if they've been treated really, you really well or whatever, right? You've worked the hours, they've given you the money, and, and it's okay to to seek new things or to uh, be done when those hours are over. I know I already kind of mentioned that, but 
Um, does this, that make sense? This is such a good one, and this is one that I talk to people about a lot. Um, and this is actually one I really struggled with when I was leaving community mental health, mm-hmm. right? I had been there through <clears throat> my internship. I had been there through a whole bunch of training opportunities and the first couple of years of my career. And I felt very, very guilty about the idea of setting limits, setting boundaries, leaving the job, all of these things, because I felt like I owed them mm-hmm. something. They'd been good to you. They'd been good to me. And honestly, like I enjoyed working there and I really cared about my clients. So it's not that those things were not present, but I started to feel this sense of guilt. Like I do, like I owe them something. I owe them this X amount of productivity. I owe them being this kind of an employee because they've been good to me. So now I'm indebted to them. But if you think of, like, I like the way that you just phrased that. Like, no, no, look at what exactly the employment agreement is. I do A, B, C, D things for X amount of dollars, and that's what the agreement is. The agreement is not that I owe you my life because Mm -hmm. you've invested some time in me. I've invested time in you, too. You've made money off of me, and I've grown out as a professional in this job. But it's been mutually beneficial. And if a job is not mutually beneficial, it's not even a healthy place to be in to begin with. Right, yeah. I like this concept of, because I see it a lot too, of having to perform at an exceptional level the entire time. And I just maybe will end my comments with just this analogy, and I use this a lot with folks. It's a sports analogy, so hopefully we all like sports. Uh, If you think about sports, in all of them that I'm currently thinking of, uh, there is a half time. There's a quarter or a period or a half or something where there's a break and you go to the locker room and there's coaching that takes place. Uh, usually each team is awarded some types of timeouts. Uh, also, once you get to a certain level in sports, there's like TV timeouts, right? So, hey, ESPN is going to pay X amount of dollars. So we're going to take a break right now. Uh, two-minute warnings, right? So there's all of these breaks that these professionals take. And I think that we should probably find a way to justify in our mind that we can also have those half times or timeouts, two-minute warnings, without feeling guilty about it. Now, this can be tricky to do, but I oftentimes lay this analogy out. Take a sick day. Coming from somebody who didn't, take a sick day. (laughs) Um, You can take a mental health day. You can take time off. Employers, a benefit that they offer is PTO, generally speaking. I know. I love right? that. I always, I just, when I, my clients talk about, like, I haven't taken sick days or whatever, I'm like, what's the point of benefit? Like, how is that a benefit if you're not using it? Yeah. It's not a benefit at all. Absolutely. Right. Now, I think there's a couple of things that I would recommend people do to kind of help with that. Because if you take a sick day, it can be an inconvenience to your coworkers, right? Depending yeah. on the profession. If you call in sick an hour prior to your shift, then your coworkers, who hopefully you enjoy spending time with, get the added load until they can find somebody to come in and cover that shift. So if we can plan these kinds of things, if we can plan PTO, if you're starting to feel sick on a Wednesday night and you have a shift on Thursday, maybe you let your boss know or you give a heads up. If you can find a way to try and ease the load of others while also recognizing that's not always the case, uh, take the time out. Go to halftime, take a day off. I think that's so important for your mental health, but I think we have this expectation where we have to perform at an exceptionally high level all of the time, and it's not realistic. Yeah. I think of, like, when, I, when I'm on LinkedIn, like, there's so many people I know, and, like, everyone's posting all the time about, like, the grind and, like, all the stuff they're doing, and I, I think we give ourselves a little bit of unreasonable expectation kind of going with what you're saying. Like, it's okay to take a sick day. Yeah. It's okay to... It's encouraged. Yeah. And it's okay if you're not 100% productive every single day. I remember I had a conversation with a therapist, another therapist here, um, because I wasn't feeling good and she wasn't feeling good. And we kind of came to this mutual conclusion, like, you can't be the... I can't be the best version of me all of the time here. That's that's just not fair to myself. I'll always be disappointed. If all I have to give today is 70%, then I will give 70% and that's enough. Can I also throw in really quickly, this is important to know. Your boss will probably never come to you and say, hey, take a sick day. Your boss won't do that, most likely. So you're going to have to do it for yourself. Yeah. Right? 
Yeah, I think a lot of these things are things that we have to look at and just set boundaries with ourselves even more than a good point, with yeah. other things around us, right? It, it's, it's us that needs to set and hold some of these limits. I even think as we're talking about some of this idea of like energy expenditure, right? Giving yourself a half time, giving yourself a day off. I think it's reasonable to expect every day there are going to be certain hours where you are more productive and more capable of being productive than other hours so that you sort of structure your day so that you are completing some of those tax tasks during your more productive hours and you allow yourself to have a part a portion of the day where you are doing easier tasks or um, maybe expecting a little less as far as output from yourself yeah i i'll go ahead i was just gonna say i want lunch to be my most productive hour <laughs> <laughs> i know i was thinking yesterday our internet was out like all day yesterday and that was annoying wasn't it uh-huh because i'm already already bad enough at getting my notes done on time so that was just an extra i guess i can't <laughs> um but i i had a couple of clients cancel so i had a gap and i laid on my couch for 20 minutes and watched a youtube video and didn't feel bad one bit yeah good for you whereas maybe i would have before but i was i'm practicing <laughs> that's right um well thanks everybody for joining us for today's video um hopefully something that we talked about was helpful for you like always if you enjoyed it please like subscribe and comment we'd love to talk to you and we'll see you on the next one thanks thank you